Hello and welcome to the Eileen Silverman Show. I'm your host Eileen and on this week's program our guests discuss PFLAG, parents and friends of lesbians and gays, and how they are working on their mission of promoting acceptance and understanding of the full range of human diversity. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for our program on Friday, January 9th, 2015. The community is invited to the opening reception to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the University Gallery. To tell us more, I'm pleased to introduce my guest, Amy Vigilante, Director, University Galleries, and Roy Hunt, original member of the Gallery Guild second president of the Guild and curator of the Roy Craven Legacy Exhibition. And Roy and Amy, it is wonderful to have you here. And I congratulate you both. I know you and many people are working hard to make this anniversary possible and such a celebration. Well, it's a tribute to Roy Craven, so we have embraced this joyfully. Oh. And you're right, many of us have been working on this. Right, I know. And, and I'm thinking, Amy, for you, how long have you been director? I've been there about 12 and a half years. Okay, so, you know, it's, a, it's just a wonderful opportunity for you to follow in the legacy of Roy Craven and all the other directors in between, and there's some powerful people, wonderfully mm -hmm. talented people. And Roy, you go back to, you know, the original to, member, I the go, founding member, Gallery the Gallery was established. <laughs> That's right. So you're the perfect person to kind of give us a sense of that history. Well, Roy was a great friend as well as being a wonderful director of the gallery, and we spent a great deal of time together. In fact, he and his wife uh, came to my house for Christmas Eve uh, for many years until uh, Roy passed away, and Lorna continued to until this past Christmas. So, uh, you know, they were great friends as well as uh, wonderful benefactors of the arts in our community. Well, so. we, and we, you're right. Now, because he was director for, what, 25 years, longest standing director, and that is quite a history. So with all that he accomplished and your personal friendship, you must be bringing so much to that exhibition to <coughs> highlight his, his career and, and who he was. And, well, we would like to, to think so. We have uh, borrowed <laughs> from the Harn uh, over 50 pieces that uh, came into the gallery collection during Roy's time. Uh, and it's, it's those relationships he developed with, uh, with donors, with collectors, uh, that really established uh, what the Harn is today. Well, and take us back, founding member Gallery Guild, with um, a number uh, of other people that are well recognized in this community. Well, I, in fact, I have uh, <laughs> in front of me a letter <laughs> that we sent out uh, in April of 1975 inviting uh, members of the community we thought would be interested in, right. in joining with us. And I, as I look over the um, the list on the letterhead, it, it's really very impressive. Uh, Mrs. Robert Q. Marston was the honorary chair. Uh, Howard Suzuki, who was dean of one of our colleges, was our first president. 
Mary Jean Hansen was the vice chair, Buff Gordon, who many of uh, this audience will know was uh, recording secretary, Patty Stanley, uh, Pat Rambo, um, then uh, uh, those of us who are old enough would remember Virginia Ahrens, <laughs> then uh, Billy Chandler who succeeded me as president and who was uh, you know, a major collector of American art, uh, Sally Hadley, right. Harold Hansen, Frank Maloney, the dean of the law school who oh, hired yes. me in 1962, John Sun, uh, <coughs> Josh Dickinson, uh, oh, yeah. Marianne Green, who many of you know from Certainly. public radio. Uh, <coughs> so these are, are people who were on our original board and, and committees. So again, we, we uh, had a lot of wonderful a, people. Again, a wonderful legacy. Yeah. And into, for this 50th uh, anniversary celebration, you have a steering committee, you've got you know, great members. Who, what, who are the honorary co-chairs? I know Chris Matchin. Or Chris Matchin and Gary Libby, who is the, I guess his ter ter title would be Director Emeritus of the Daytona Museum of Arts and Sciences. But, uh, Amy may tell us about the special <laughs> relationship that he had with uh, Roy Craven. Oh, and Gary Libby is also an alumnus of the School of Art and Art History. Okay. Um, a benefactor to the gallery and to the school. And he was a very active member in FAMDA, and so was Roy Craven. And FAMDA is the Florida Art Museum Directors Association. Oh, now I see. And it's All that. still a very strong group. And I sort of grew up in the museum business with these people as my mentors. Um, oh. They had a very big presence in Washington, D.C., and did a lot of lobbying for the arts on a national level. And I would say that Gary and Roy Craven were the leaders of that movement. Um, Exceptional. One of the many things I've learned in the process of planning this, and I never sit down with Roy without learning, like, five <laughs> new things. I can things say five new things. Every yes, time. More. <laughs> so, so we have much more to cover. Right. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. We're back talking about the 50th anniversary of the University Gallery. And Roy, take us back to the Gallery Guild again and, and share some of the mm -hmm. objectives from the beginning. Well, I, I think there were two major objectives. One was immediate support uh, for the then existing gallery and its programs to assist with uh, adding to the collection, to assist with openings. Uh, but certainly a long-term objective or goal was to create a permanent art museum in this community. And uh -huh. that, of course, t uh, turned out to be the Harn. Right. Uh, because eventually we created a steering committee which was uh, headed by Bill Hadley, Dr. Hadley, 
um, <coughs> Roy Craven, of course, was on the committee, as was I and other members of the community. And we had to um, first get permission from then President Marston to raise money for a museum. And how was th that? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard of. Uh, and I'm like, uh, that, why that, would we need that? That huh? anyone was going to give money for an art museum. However, he gave us permission to go forward with, with raising money. And when uh, Dr. Hadley uh, talked with David Coffrin uh, about this, and, and David decided to, uh, to fund this right. uh, museum, uh, President Marston, I think, was astonished because at that time it was the largest single cash gift the university oh. had ever received. So oh. um, great, great credit goes to both Dr. Hadley and to Dr. Coffrin. Indeed. They've enriched our lives enormously, I know. in my you, opinion. Yes, I agree. We can't even think no, I, I can't. Gainesville without so. the Harn Museum of Art. Now <coughs> it's just part of our lives. Then, of course, the, the collecting areas for the Harn uh, the five areas right. uh, really that. grew yeah. from uh, what uh, the the gallery had collected, um, and of course all of this has to do with relationships, the relationship of Hadley and Coffrin, but the relationship that Roy Craven had uh, as a result of his expertise and experience. Uh, Roy had served in the Army in, or the Air Force in World War II in India. And that's where he developed his love for Indian art. And he told me that he and a friend from Chattanooga would get on their bicycles when they had any free time right. and ride around India uh, looking at right. art and buildings. Then because of that and his publication of um, The Art of India by Thames and Hudson, a volume that's still in print, translated into French, uh, wow. He attracted George Bickford from Cleveland, Ohio. George was the uh, uh, president or the chairman of the board of the Cleveland Museum of Art, but uh, was a great collector of the art of India. And every time he came down, he brought some pieces to leave uh, for the university gallery and eventually uh, gave a great deal. And that and the uh, Jaminy Roy works and uh, other things given by the Needhams from Jacksonville really uh, served That's as the inspiration for the uh, Asian collection. So, uh, so when we look at photography, we look at uh, uh, Asian, Asian, we look at uh, American art of the first right. half of the century from Billy Chandler, uh, <coughs> and we look at uh, African, and those are the principal uh, areas. areas. And they all the came Museum. about as a result of these relationships that that Roy had developed and the collecting that was done in the university gallery. So this 50th anniversary really helps us understand that whole intermeshment, that whole history. Of, that whole of history. How the Harn came to be and how right. their, their areas of collecting came to be. And certainly, uh, first and foremost probably was Roy's relationship with Billy Chandler, who was the third president of the Gallery Guild, but Billy, a local lawyer, uh, had started out collecting without any focus, as right, I recall. <laughs> I remember being in Billy's home and uh, he would pull things out from under the bed and uh, closets and what have you. But I remember Say, being I this in and his this uh, and this. library and, and seeing the blamink that we will have in this show. Um, and uh, again, you know, a French artist. But Roy Craven convinced him to focus uh, on a, an area and develop a, a collection that was really meaningful in terms of uh, of a museum. Right, at museum quality. And, and so he uh, served as Billy's advisor really on the purchase of American art of the first half of the 20th century. And that's of course one of our major uh, strengths right. at the Harn today. Now, I want you to know Roy, when I go back into the Harn, I'm going to have a whole different perspective because <laughs> of what you're explaining to me. You're enriching it for all of us, clearly. And we're going to take another quick break. Okay. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
we're talking about the 50th anniversary of University Gallery. And Amy, tell us more about what's going to be happening in this time frame for the celebration. In Grinter Gallery, we're going to have a show about Roy Craven's travels through South America, and it oh. is being curated by Roz Levy. And it's mostly from the Andes, a lot of crafts and textiles. Um, these objects were in the University Gallery, then in 1988 they were transferred to the Harn, and then okay. later they were transferred to the Florida Museum of Natural History. So we are working with the Museum of Natural History to borrow back these objects. And this is going to be a magnificent show as well. Right there, um, bottom floor of Grincher Hall. That's right. Okay, yes. Um, and in Focus Gallery, which is normally our student gallery, we've taken right. it over with the making of a museum which is the family tree timeline and explanation of everything Roy just talked no, about. No, I know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fantastic. So, and I've got a steering committee. In addition to Roy, I've got lots of, um, you know, and Chris Matchin and Gary Libby. I've got Marsha Isaacson and Charlotte Porter and, you know, Roz. And several other people were working on this. So we're going to have um, the titles of all of the shows that were presented in the gallery for 50 years. We're going to have... Um, <laughs> A family tree that shows Roy Craven at the top. Right. Then all these patrons and wonderful supporters that Roy talked about. And then in the bottom, we have the, the Harns Five collecting areas. So it, it, it really explains it everything. Does. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people don't understand the inner workings of a museum, no. the inner workings of a gallery, I'm how a collection right, comes together. And uh, we feel like this is a really good opportunity to describe that and explain that for people to understand. And through that, we can appreciate much more our visit to the University mm -hmm. Gallery, Grinter Focus, and certainly to the Har Museum of Art. Because when you understand comes greater appreciation. I think that's certainly true indeed. Uh, I, I think there are many who don't appreciate the difference between a museum and a gallery, so that's, that's one of the important contributions that uh, Amy and uh, what she's accomplishing during this 2015 uh, will do. Right. And it's going to be going on for quite a while. There's several months' mm -hmm. worth of uh, opportunity to visit the right. exhibits, right, Amy? Through and February, and uh -huh. um, we also have done a few uh, interviews, oral histories with the That's Samuel right. Proctor program. So we have both Roy Hunt and Gary Libby talking about um, the University Gallery, but in addition, all of the um, subsequent gallery directors have been interviewed. So we have Ruth That's Beach outstanding. and Jim Wyman and Tina Mullen um, and Karen Valdez and myself all talking all about what we did a little bit and you know and also what Roy built for us. Providing that perspective right. and bringing in the oral history program at UF. I, yes. I hate to raise such a uh, difficult topic but Amy I think you should tell people <laughs> where to park. Oh my goodness. Oh no yes yes. Uh, well in general. <laughs> no, that's in very general? important and because it's for, for it, the it's, University uh, yeah. Gallery. For, um, well, for the night of our opening, January 9th, you can park at Tigard Hall. It's all open. And, okay, for the evening. Um, you know, for those who don't know, after 4.30 at UF, parking is lifted. That's right. No we problem. We also are open on Thursday nights till 7. But in general, we do have three parking spots that are just for the University Gallery, and they're off Inner Road, when you, which is Parallels Museum going back out toward 13th, and right before you get to 13th, you turn into the little lot, there are three spots. I've been there, right? right? And once you get to University Gallery, you're just just right around, Focus Gallery is right, right. there, Grinter Gallery, just a little right. wonderful walk kind of through a courtyard. Mm -hmm. So it is all together there within the College it of is. the Arts, and uh, well worth the visit. Mm -hmm. And the library is, is part of this whole um, celebration also. How does that fit in, Amy? That's right. Um, Roy Craven wrote many very important books, and of course the Smathers Library has them in special collections. They've been really involved. Peg Peggy McBride from uh, the special collections has helped us archive and digitize all of the catalogs from the gallery. They are all going to be available to look at, and the library is going to do a special exhibition of Roy's books that will be there concurrently with our show. So it's very uh, exciting. It is. You mm -hmm. have a, a great deal planned, mm -hmm. and it's going to be wonderful, and there's still more to cover. Well, We're going to and Roy's daughter has recently given the library 11,000 oh, 11, yes. from his personal collection. So. In perfect condition, black oh, and white, very artistic. And I guess I'll let out a little secret <laughs> yes, that please. we're going to feature also in, in the timeline exhibition 
all the pictures he took in 1974 of the faculty, black and white, staged, very 70s. I saw one or two. In their <laughs> yes. studios. Yes, I stunning. did. Stunning. You will know some of these people, of course, you know, Hiram Williams, Jerry Ullsman, right. and it goes way back. It, it's going to be wonderful. What a wonderful opportunity. It's mm -hmm. very meaningful. Yeah. We're going to take just a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <clears throat> We're discussing the 50th anniversary of the University Gallery. And Amy, tell us, what is the gallery up to now? Well, since our collection went to the Harn and the Museum of Natural History, we became a contemporary exhibition gallery without a, a permanent collection, which is wonderful because it gives us the opportunity to bring in new, cutting edge, exciting things, things that are spontaneous, opportunities that come along like the Persian textiles we did last year that are just, you know, wonderful chances to present a very right. intact, uh, specific subject matter. Um, and we're largely manned by students, so we're a very integral part of the School of Art and Art History, which is part of the College of the right. Arts, and we work with students on every level. So the Timeline Exhibition and Focus is being designed by Mint, our graphic design group that does sort of commercial what a great work. Opportunity. It's fantastic. I've got museum studies students in the gallery that do the research. Right now I've got our history students that are researching some of the specific works that Roy selected to have longer labels just to talk about that. Um, so it's it's a very exciting thing. Right. To they are learning in both ways, mm -hmm. learning the history and learning through doing and you have several uh, exhibitions throughout the year right mm -hmm. at University Gallery um, like uh, the student jury students, show yes. we have the MFA thesis shows right and then in the fall I get to curate a couple of shows so it's it's ever-changing and exciting and to be honest with you I'm not really sure how they had that collection in that gallery <laughs> I you're looking you, at that space I'm, 3,000 square feet right, and, and going where was that then? very little storage and there were 3,000 objects that went from us to the Harn and Roy people window. tell me all the time they were there and I'm like how where, how where? is this possible <laughs> so that's you know a very interesting thing now if you go to the Harn now and you go downstairs there is storage which they still need more of but right. it's an, an ongoing growing. issue Issue. and art needs to be taken care of and exactly. protected and preserved for eternity. It has to be stored appropriately. Well, there was an attic at the gallery. I know, that's <laughs> wrong. The secret, is this yes. the secret, Roy? And, well, and now I'm really looking forward to everything, mm -hmm. especially Friday night. January 9th, it already a new year, 2015. Right. Tell us what's going to take place. Well, we usually have our openings include all three galleries, and this one okay. will as well. We're, you know, Miliana's is doing the food, 
for All the right. members preview and we're going to have champagne we're making special champagne flutes with our uh, 50th anniversary oh, logo um, engraved and then from seven to nine becomes the public reception and we're having food by vine the who makes homemade bread yes. um and we usually have dancing in the courtyard i don't know if it's going to be too cold that night we're going to play it by ear but we've been getting into some disco and dj yes. and bringing things back from oh, the no? 60s 70s and 80s um and our parties are, are a legendary i have to say that's the one thing <laughs> we're known for and now the, the six to seven p.m is the private reception mm -hmm. as you said for members so being a member is very important. Uh, i hope that will encourage everyone who's watching <laughs> exactly. the program tonight to uh, become a member because uh, it's going to be a memorable party yes and it's valuable membership keeps mm -hmm. the gallery uh going the yes. university gallery going like it does so many and they can go to the website find out Right. different levels, how to join, because for mm -hmm. each of these exhibits you've talked about, there is always uh, a private reception and a public mm -hmm. reception. So yes, you can continue to party throughout the year. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But this and will we, be the number one party, the 50th. That's right. And I want to thank you both for all you're doing to make this possible. Well, thank you and for having us. Oh, Thank you, Eileen. I've learned so much, Roy, as I always do in a conversation mm -hmm. with you. And Amy, I'm thrilled for you. Congratulations on being director at this time of the University Galleries. It's just outstanding. And we will be the people, we'll be partying January 9th. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> and I hope I will see you there too. And I'm so glad you tuned in. And I hope you'll join us next week. Take care.